Welcome to live stream number 129. My name is Lars Christensen and today is Tuesday, February 20th, 19, 19, 1997, 2018. Whew, man. Um, today's topic is, well, we're going to go back to, uh, we're going to go back to basics here. We're going to talk about, we're going to model up what I would call a simple wooden box. Um, just like, uh, this one here, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about best practices. And, uh, if you haven't seen the live stream before, we're going to talk something about using parameters, uh, for this. So, um, fairly simple model for some of you guys. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully useful for some of you guys and for you guys who look at this and be like, Oh, I could do this in my sleep. Maybe, maybe it just assures you in, uh, in some of your best practices. So 129, let's jump in and uh, model up this, uh, this box here. So, um, let's just get rid of this part, right? We don't need that one. Now, one little thing I wanted to show, uh, that is somewhat buried, uh, inside of fusion. Um, if you go ahead and you start out a new sketch, I want to come to the box just in a second. <laughs> I'm already off topic. <laughs> That's stupid. Uh, if I come in here and uh, you extrude something up, uh, by default inside of fusion, this is steel. The properties is steel. And, um, it's not only steel for the appearance. If I right click and click appearances, uh, this is the steel satin symbol. Um, it is actually also, if you go up and you right click up here to the left and you go into properties, you will see that the physical material is also steel. Now, what is the difference? Well, one appearances is kind of like just, uh, a pretty, um, you know, kind of like wallpaper on your part where the physical properties is actually used in something like simulation, for example, and you can actually go in there, uh, and you can see, uh, volume and mass and, and things like that. Now, what I wanted to show you is because some people have sent out to me and said, Hey, uh, you know, I never do in work model in steel, not everybody does in steel. If you go up to your name and you go into preferences, click on that. Then you should get your preferences up here. If you move over to the left over here in the tree, you go to materials right here. You can actually change. You can leave it at steel if you wanted to and just change the appearances or you could go in here and you could find whatever kind of material you want in here and we could change it, um, to a, for example, I use this, a pine, I don't know. I don't know these different types of pine. I was just going to select default pine here. Um, and then all you have to do, you see this grades out. So now it's, it's wood or pine. Make sure you hit apply and okay. Now it's not going to work until you kind of like X out up here. You kind of like got to clean, get, get out of the model you have open. So this is kind of like setting it for, for default. Click close that out uh, here. So we kind of like get a new model. From scratch. Um, now, just so you know, I'm just going to go back into the preferences, name preferences. You can always in here, um, go and hit restore to default. If you, if you mess around in here, you can almost go back to default. Okay. So let's model up this box here. Um, and we're going to do this box with a couple of different things. I want to do it as, uh, components. So we're talking about an assembly. And uh, then we're going to start adding some parameters so we can kind of like control the size, the thickness and different things of this box. This is something that I use quite a bit. If you have a model that either uh, you're going to work a lot with, so you maybe have like a basic template and you're going to change it to different configurations. Or what I really favor to do is if you're in front of a customer, this shows really, really well. So. First thing, since we know that we're going to make this piece out of all different kinds of pieces of wood, it's an assembly. The best practice is to start creating components from the get go. 
So right now, you will see up here, we have a little white, uh, that's a square, white block. That is one component. But if I right click on it, and I say new component, notice what happens to this icon, and then this icon will kind of like be set down into the tree. So here, hit new component, and I did that by the way, right click, new component. See now how there's kind of like three small rectangle and we have one here. So this is best practices if you know from the start that you have to, uh, to create multiple, multiple parts. Okay, so let's start out by making kind of like the, the bottom of this wooden crate here. So I'm just gonna go in and create a new sketch. You can see here that this little fish eye is active, but tells me component one is active. Um, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. I'm gonna create a new sketch, and I'm just gonna select the bottom face here. I'm gonna hit S on my S key to get that little sketch toolbar up uh, here. We talked about that in, um, in, other, in other live streams. Uh, so you could, you can add items in here. Uh, so you could in here hit, if I start typing, circular, you can see the circular pattern shows up here. If I click that little arrow next to it, then it actually gets added to this menu. So that's how you can add components to the menu by finding it here. Uh, let's do line, um, it's already there. Let's do a line, if you click on that, then you can add that little narrow net. So you can just drag them off if you don't want them in there. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do a center rectangle. That's what I use most of the time. And just make sure we snap to the center. And I'm gonna make this one 200 millimeters by 300 millimeters. That's a good size box. Hit enter, zoom out a little bit here, and uh, hit Q for press pull. And then we're gonna make this one 10 millimeters. And you will see now that I got that pine finish because we set that preference. So from this, if you're always working with wood, then um, uh -huh, you won. Um, now, a couple of good practices, I think, one is to start naming your components up here. If you're working a lot with assemblies, you uh, you know you can end up with a lot of components. So this one here, we can slow left click, and we can call that one bottom, right? That makes it a little bit easier. Now, another thing we're gonna talk a little bit about is these parameters. Now, I have made a couple of live streams about parameters before. I should have put them down in the description area, but I'm bad at that. So my email address is down in the description area. If you wanna find those other parameters videos, you can't find them in the 129 live streams, send me an email and I'll send them to you. Um, but the parameters lets us control different things. And I actually prefer to do parameters. You will find it under the, the modified dropdown. See, I can't even remember where it is. Modified dropdown down in the bottom, you will find change parameters. Um, and I like to do it as I'm moving along in my design. That's one of the questions I've got from a few people. Uh, I don't, you can wait to the end, but it just becomes a little bit harder. Now, I'm gonna work a lot with change parameters, so I don't wanna dig into this drop-down menu. So I'm actually gonna do the same thing as I did with the S key. I'm gonna click that little add to toolbar. See that little thing there? And now it appears to the toolbar. So now I don't have to click drop, modify, and go down here. Now we can just click here to open up. And again, just like before, if I wanna get rid of it, just left, hold down the left mouse button and drag it off the screen and let go. And, um, and it goes away. Okay, so uh, let's go into our parameters. Now the parameter screen here, uh, there's not much exciting with it in here, but you will see that bottom, our bottom component has also appeared here. And if I click on the little arrow next to it, you will see that it found the sketch and the extrude. That's the one we have down there, right? Uh, so if we expand the sketch, we will actually see that there was our sketch for the 300 by 200 and the extrude of 10 millimeters thick. That was that extrude we did down there. So here's the trick with parameters. You can do a lot of different things with parameters, but just for today, uh, we're gonna go up and start creating some what is called user parameters. These model parameters is what the software have captured. So I'm gonna go up here and click user parameters, and I will get a little dialog box up here where you can give it names. Now, I'm gonna call this one length. 
And then be aware of that you can set different units in the drop down. You can do all different kind of things. This is for you to go in and kind of like play, or play around with. I'm gonna leave it a millimeters. And I made the length 300, right? So I'm just gonna type in the same thing as I did in my sketch right now and hit okay. And then I get a user parameter that is, is named length. Now, right now, this is completely useless. They don't mean anything yet. Uh, but I'm gonna go in and create another one. And I'm gonna call that one width. That's not how you spell width. Width. I think I did this the last time I did this. Oh man, I hate that. Sorry. Uh, 200. <laughs> Somebody in live stream right now, like slamming their head against the, the keyboard. Uh, again, that's the width of it. Still doesn't do uh, anything. And then I'm going to do the thickness. Hit the plus sign and type in thickness. And that was 10. So right now, these parameters here doesn't really do anything. This is my, this is user parameters. Last is parameters, but what I can do now is I can actually replace these ones that we created with our sketches with, uh, with these parameters. So if I type down here where it says 300, instead I type L, you will see that that length appears. Okay, that means that now if I change this to 400, that will actually update. I'll show you that in a second. This one, we're going to do the width. Pretty sure that's not how you spell with for this is with somebody, not uh, with for a length. Uh, and then this one here is going to be thickness. So you start typing and you will see that it kind of like appear here. Okay. Now, if I make this a little smaller, this window, you can kind of like drag it down. Let's drag it so we can kind of like see it. Something like that. Move it down here. These, this was the user parameter. So now if we go in here, we can actually type in 500 in length and I hit enter. See how the screen actually now will um, update, right? So we have just created these numbers in here actually controls these, this down here. So if you've never seen parameters before, right now you're like, huh, this is kind of interesting. I wonder if I can use that for something useful. Well, you can. I'll show you. So let's go back to our default numbers here. So this was the first component that's kind of like controlled here. So with that, I'm going to start creating the other components. So now I'm going to create the side of it. So I'm going to go up to the top up here. I'm going to right click on that and say new component. But we'll create a new component. I'm going to slow left click on it and call it side. And I'm going to start a sketch. Now, when I click the sketch, before we use the planes, I'm actually going to place it right on the side of uh, our bottom here. So I'm going to left click there. It's going to go normal too. This is not really so different. I'm going to use the, I, I normally use the two point rectangle. Make sure it's snapped to one lower corner. And I'm just going to make it bigger than uh, the, the left side here. Then I normally use the collinear relationship over here to the right, making this one and this one collinear. And the height of this box, well, here you could do D for dimension, and we could place a dimension here. Let's make it 150 millimeters, okay? And now I have this fully defined, it's totally black, so let's hit Q for press pull, kind of like moving up to the side. Now when you select with the press pull, see how the software is actually breaking, uh, it's, it break up the, because of the lines in the, in the model, it breaks up, so make sure you select both ends here. Now we have the dialog box here where we normally will add some thickness, but we can type in here back to the parameters. So if I want the bottom and the side to be the same thickness, I can just start typing TH, and here you will see the parameters open up. <laughs> so now by doing and hit enter, we now have a wall that is just as thick as the bottom. And by the way, if you wonder why this one is transparent, that is what this fish eye does up here. So we can go back and click and we make the bottom active. Then you will see that now the side is transparent and the bottom is, um, is active. And you will actually see down here in the tree, uh, depending on what you're working on, it will switch over. So this was the bottom sketch and extrusion. 
And if I switch back to the side, this is now the side sketch and extrusion. And if I go up to the top and make that one active, now they both are, are you know, normal to look at. And you will see we got everything in here. Okay. So pretty quick way to kind of like create something like this. Now we did do the height uh, for this box here. That might also be something that I want to add into my parameters. So I'm literally just going to go back into change parameters and my dialog box is going to open up. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger again, drag a corner out. You will now see that side shows up as a, uh, as a, a, a feature we can control. If I hit the little arrow next to it, you will see that we have the sketch on the 150. That's the height of our box. And also just so you see, when I did that extrusion, it captured that thickness. So I'm going to go back up to the user parameter and I'm going to create another parameter that I'm going to call heights. And that one we made, I always just make it the same as whatever you did in your sketch to start with. And then go down to where it says side, go over here, and then that's going to be H and our height should show up. So now we can control four different things from up here. Okay. All right, let's move on here. Uh, Hopefully this, hopefully this is useful. Uh, just some best, best practice that I hope that you kind of like get something out of. Now, I want to create another side over here, of course. So we could do the whole thing again, but we could also be a little lazy. <laughs> what I think is okay when you're using Ken and Cam. Um, go down to create and we could mirror that first uh, side over here. Now be aware of in the drop down of the mirroring you can select components. So we can actually click here and we can select that component, that side, select what we want to mirror over. And we actually, because we use the center rectangle, we actually have a plane right there. So now we have just mirrored that over. And Fusion is smart enough that it actually shows us that as a mirrored part. So that's good. It, it keeps the side, but it gives us a mirror so we always know that that is kind of like a mirror from this one uh, over here. So this is good. Uh, now, of course, all this follows. So if we go back into per our parameter and we change our width, what is not width, width, um, let's change that one to, to 500. You will see that the two sidewalls follows along with that. So we have kind of like, this is what, this is, and I want to do a live stream on this later on. This is parametric modeling. When people are talking about parametric modeling, this is when you start adding some intelligence into your model where we can change one dimensions and other things kind of like updates with it. All right, I'm going to do another component. Right click up on the top up here, new component. And this one's going to be uh, an and, right? So and and start a new sketch. And I'm gonna select this face down here on the bottom. And this one is pretty simple. Two point rectangle, this corner to this outer corner out here. Hit Q. And again, make sure you select anything that you want in here. You might have to multiple select. And the thickness, well, we have that parameter. So I'm just gonna start typing thickness. Boom. Now we got, uh, we got that thickness there hit OK, and now we have uh, an end there. So that was pretty easy. Now I'm going to repeat what we just did with mirroring this one over to the other side too, right? So go to Create, Mirror, click on that. And it remembers from last time it's components. So I'm going to select that component. And the plane that I'm going to use is that plane that we have right in there. And I now get a... Uh, another mirror there. Now again, the fish eye, whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever you want to make active. So let's make the whole thing active. And, um, and we end up with almost uh, finished the box uh, right here. But I want to add a couple of features on it. I want to show you uh, a couple of tips more before we, before we uh, wrap this up because there's a couple of other goodies in there. Um, but you can kind of see where we now have these different components created. We are naming them so they are a lot easier uh, to find uh, over here. Now let's put a handle 
uh, in the two ends here so we can carry uh, this box. So I'm going to go back to the first end. I'm going to make that one active by clicking the little fish eye. So the other ones kind of like go transparent. I'm going to start a sketch on this face. Go normal too. And I am going to go in and hit the sketch. And I actually like to start using some of these slot commands. It's all different kinds of slots in here. So I'm going to hit the center to center slot. I'm going to left click once, creates a line, left click again. And then I can kind of like place a, uh, an opening here. Now this one, of course, is blue. So we're going to do a couple of things. I'm actually going to create a line from the origin down here, vertical up. And I don't really care about the height of this. This line here that is created is going to be uh, what I'm going to use the sym symmetrical constraint. Symmetrical, so I'm going to select this point, this point, and then select our line. And now that is, uh, is constraint between there. So now I don't have to worry about uh, the placement, but I still got to do a couple of other things. So let's hit, so that was the symmetry command I used for that. So let's hit D for dimension. Let's place, let's make that 10. Let's place a dimension from this line to this line. Let's make that 20. Um, and then we still have a width on this right now. It can move like this. So you could say D for dimension. And so like from here to here, but you will see that it does the center of the circle. What if you want tangency? You want tangency? D for dimension, see how next to my cursor we got the dimensioning tool. And I'm going to right click with my mouse. Then I get pick circle tangent. And now I get the outside. And now this gets full defined. Wait a minute, that maybe was a little bit too fast. How did I get tangency again? Let me delete this dimension. So right now it goes like this. And if I hit D for dimension and just click on the two arcs, then it goes from center. What might be what you that might be what you want, um, but I actually don't want that. What I want is I want tangency on the outside of the arcs. So with the dimension tool, right click out in space, and here you have now a pick circle arc tangent. And so like here and here, and there you get the, the tangency. Okay. Uh, now this is fully defined and now we can hit Q and then we can go ahead here and select the two halves and now we can do um, a cut through here. Now I wanted to show you something. So right now I'm just kind of like cutting through the first box, right? Um, I could actually drag it all the way through and now you will see that it cuts through the second box box. Um, but notice that down here in the bottom of our standard extrude command, there's objects to cuts. See how it has the two bodies or components in here. So I could actually turn off the mirror and it would not cut through that. So you can actually control that right here. Now if I move it back, uh, then you will see that we only see one. But as soon as they drag it through here, that actually comes to uh, to, uh, to life uh, down, down here. But there is actually also another option uh, of what we, we, what we can do. Um, let's just do cut through the box through one side. And then if we, instead of distance, right now it's a distance, if we do two object, for example, and select that back side, now it only comes to the thickness of that. Now ro let's roll back to the beginning. Um, you might say, well, wait a minute. Why is this opening right here not going through this one? Because that was a mirror. This is very important. <laughs> I think fusion information. If you haven't, if you haven't, if you've already seen this, fine. <laughs> but if, if you haven't, um, the timeline down here is deadly accurate within fusion. Everything happens within the timeline. What means that we mirrored that second piece there and then afterwards we created uh, the cut. 
So this, these, the sketch and the cut happen after the mirror in the timeline. That's why it's not appearing here. Now, here's the cool thing. We can actually just take the mirror and we can drag it where, wherever we want. We can drag it after them and boom. See how it's in there? So you can actually reorder uh, things down here in the timeline and we now um, now have this uh, this here. Now, one last thing. We're almost up on the half an hour. One last thing. Uh, that is that if I go up here and left drag, notice what we're in for here. This is just a bunch of pieces floating around in space. We haven't tied anything down. Now, let me just do Control Z or Command Z. Uh, on my keyboard to move everything back again. Um, so we need to kind of like lock this into place. Now, I feel, I feel the best thing is to find one component on your model and nail that one into space. In this case here, I think the bottom makes the most sense. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but my preferred way is to go up here and right click and say ground on the bottom. See how you get a little thumbtack that shows up up here? That kind of like always give you a visualization that that is the one that is locked into space. And then if you come from other software, such as like Inventor or SolidWorks, you might now think that now we have to start mating all these parts together. But Fusion has a really neat, uh, I mean, joints inside of Fusion are, I think, so much better than, than the other pieces of software. But there is a special one here that is really good, and that's Rigid Group. Because we modeled everything up how we wanted nailed into place anyways, right? We're going to put some wood glue on this thing, and then we're going to nail it in. So if we use Rigid Group, select that, and select all the components... Now they all are selected. Now, when I hit OK, these are all locked into place with the bottom one being kind of like the one in space. Now you can't drag anything. There's no movement. The rigid group, and this shows up in a joint folder, um, is now sitting here and holding um, everything in place. So a lot of stuff, um, if this went a lot fast, uh, too fast for you, just rewind and check it out. But the, the point here is that now we can go back to our parameters up here and with these full numbers, and you could add all kinds of stuff, of course, but you could have added these handles, could have gotten uh, um, some different values. You're gonna start doing you know, some kind of formulas and things like that. But right now, we can literally go in here and we can change the, the height on it. So we can go in and say, let's make it 100, hit enter. And suddenly this one is, 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 is 100 height. We might think that we've got to make it a little thinner. We don't have a 10 millimeter uh, pine laying around. We have some eight millimeters. We can make it a little thinner. Maybe, you know, this is uh, something we make, um, you know, cheap stuff. We don't have much money. We can make it fall, right? So notice how we can change this. Uh, we can change the length um, and we can change the, the width to whatever we want. This here, uh, was something that I used to do a lot. If I knew I was going to present in front of a customer, um, then customers always always had you know something where they were like, well, how about if we change this or could we do this differently? And if you think a little bit of ahead with with your models, then these parameters is you know a godsend on you know if because if you didn't do it like with these parameters and the customer says. Well, how about we're making the, the length 300 and the thickness 10? Well, then you would have to go in here and, okay, so I knew that was the sketch and go in and edit this sketch and, and do it in here. And then the thickness, well, the thickness was probably, you know, maybe you made each bore 10, so now you had to go in and change them manually. With this system, I mean, I think this is just... I think you're going to end up looking like a rock star, not pond attended to my t-shirt today. 
you, I think you're gonna look like a rock star in front of, of your prospect or your customer if you start using the, some of those parameters. That was it. That was Tuesday's live stream here, the 20th. I really, really appreciate that you take the time to, uh, to jump in and watch the recording. All the, if you can make it on the live stream, really, really appreciate it. You guys are absolutely the best. That's it for today. Be back tomorrow and on Thursday. So I hope that I see you there. I'm gonna do what I normally do. I'm gonna end uh, today's broadcast and I'm gonna jump into the live stream and say hi to everybody. So if you like this, if this was useful, thumbs up. If it's not, be honest, give me that thumbs down. That's okay. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. That is kind of like what makes me go to my boss and be like, look, people are actually, uh, actually liking this. So thank you so much, guys. Until tomorrow, have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you.